Hi everyone, it's Saturday. We're going to do uh, uh, advanced, intermediate advanced uh, Gung Fu. It's not the pillar form. So we're, we usually do different things. Like I've been working on the staff form. So we had some requests for the Jifi Do, which is one of the Hunga forms. And, you know, I'm going to have a, a, one of our Sifus here do the form because, you know, there's a lot of things that my students do better than I do. So, so I want you to realize that we have some pretty deep talent here. And so I'm going to have him do the form, um, and then I'll kind of point out some things. But Jifi Do is one of the Hunga forms. It's passed down through the lineage. And originally, the sword was called Jifi Gim, which is the straight sword. But the straight sword wasn't the straight sword that we know as China. It was more like a cavalry sword, where it's like... Um, sharp on one side, but a narrow blade. So we have some of the Tai Chi uses a, a similar blade like that for, for their broadsword in the traditional arts. Uh, the Yang Sao has one. Uh, I can't find the one. I must have either took it home or it's here. So the Jifi Do is, is really more like a, a narrow straight blade, but we've adapted. It's called Jifi Do now. So that was done by our uh, great grandmaster, uh, Lam Jo has, um, you know, used the broadsword instead. So I think Mon is, mine is getting ready, and he's gonna he's gonna show you um, what the form is. It starts off with many of our other forms, and um, if you want, he can start. Uh, he's got his mic on, but I'll 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 narrate a little bit, you know, while he's doing it. Okay. While well, doing him, that's not you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll start the form. I'll face the glass in the mirror. Okay, ready? Shoulder width. Start. I'm going to step back because I don't want to cut the mirrors. Expensive mirrors. So I'll do a short version. So, I'm gonna, like I said, I'll do a short version. So, I'm gonna close it. That's just a short version. Actually, he, uh, he competed in one of the Wang Fei Hong tournaments and, you know, won medals with doing that sword form. So, Jifi Do's, you know, we have a couple of swords when Jifi Do's sell on Pakwa Do. Uh, then we have our, our uh, sticks and so forth. But, the thing is, you know, any type of broad, any type of broadsword, you know, this is, uh, you know, typically it's your positions. See how, the, like in Hunga, when you go over the head, it's your position, just like in the second form. When we spin, we turn, it's just the same. You're drawing. So your position is important. And then when you thrust, it's important. So all of these things are part of the execution. When we hold the sword form, sword, and we start, we set up, we turn. So 
it's imagery still. So when we do our, uh, the imagery comes from when you first learn your fist form, you, all that, the cutting, you know, big, the lao. Th those are all part of the movements, and then you learn to slice. So there's a lot of execution and timing that's with the weapon that you clearly can, um, can cheat. Because when we do a fist form, your hand doesn't have to work together. When you have this thing in, in here, when you slice, you, you have to know where it's going to go when you're here. So they, these are just ideas that we always build into our training. So, you know, with that said, you saw Miner do that. That's the sequence. Um, we have circular movements like, like in fencing, and then you, you thrust. So when you build your timing in the body form, then you can put it into the weapon. But the weapon, like when we do a lot of people say, oh, how come your, your hunga is not as hard as this? as rigid as some of the other styles, is because, you know, one of, in our lineage, we actually practice for agility. So we have the, uh, Lam Jo, when he was younger, he would always talk about that because he was always sometimes influenced by how the northern styles did it. So we have southern foundation and northern uh, agility. So that's what makes uh, our hunga a little bit different from some, some people. The footwork, the agility, the, the preciseness, of the positions is one thing that comes from traditional hunga, the positions, the positions. Then we have our agility because of the different movements that we have. You know, sell and pack, although those, those are, uh, has some influence from uh, other styles. Praying man has some influence from other styles. So the agility of footwork is how you're mobile. It's not just planted in one position. So that's really important. So when we do our forms, we want agility, we want Spirit, alertness, you know, the movement should be live and active. So then, you know, with that said, the same applies to the stick. When we do our stick, even though it's positioning, it's positioning, everything we're doing is really about precise movement, precision. When we go into a position, when we go into a position, it's always there. If you look here, 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 here. You know, what makes that happen is because of the body's muscle memory and positioning. So if you're an intermediate advanced and you want to progress, work more, you know, not rushing through your more, more precisely toward what we're talking about, the legs, the body form, the hands have to work consistently together. When they work together, that's coordination. So, you know, coordination is a term. What does it actually mean? summation components, upper lower coordination. How do you get all those things to happen at the same time? It's really practice. You know, like I said in the last class about the kids, it's a route system. We learn through doing it over and over again. Without doing it over and over again, your body doesn't know it. Now, do you have to do this forever? You know, once your body learns it and it starts to build off of that muscle memory and pre precision uh, movement, then you already learned it. Then your body will evolve from there, evolve from there. But it will reach, um, like I call these the thresholds, and you can't get beyond it until you practice enough to make the breakthrough. And that's really you know, going from intermediate to advanced and advanced to mastery level. Mastery level is what they call, you know, you know that's probably what the term comes from is Get like getting a master's degree. You're mastering, uh, you know, a specific level of knowledge in a specific, um, you know, uh, I guess uh, specialty. You know, it could be finance, it could be medicine, it could be anything. You're, you're always trying to perfect your skill. So when we're doing this, this is the skill that we're practicing. So the circular movements here, we have the circular movements in the sword. So a lot of the things, if you can't, develop your movement here, then how, do, how are you going to develop it here? That's a circle. When we're here, when we step up and we turn from here to leaning stance, how do we get all of this to happen? How do we get all of those things to happen? It's going through the motions one step at a time. All right? So when we, we open this form and we swing around and we drop, and we poke. 
we have this, we have this, we have this, and we turn, push, one, two, three, one, two. So you see that, and you say, well, he broke it down, I can follow that. It's not as easy as it looks, because once you try to do it, the accuracy of the position, the timing, all of that is going to be, you know, in the body, confused. If you have experience, then that will help you uh, learn how to refine it. But if you're learning it, you can't pick up on all the things that I just did, so it's not going to be able to, it's not going to be easy to just uh, mimic that completely. So that's why, you know, all this information you're getting is really stored here. Until you're learning, your body starts to catch up. So that's, you know, we, we worked on the sequence uh, the last, last few weeks, and, you know, you had that first part, and then when we came like this, and we dropped, we came to here, and we went up like this, strike one, right? Okay, so you hear one. Then you go to this corner, we pull back, and we thrust. So that's another position. And then we have another position like this. Some people go to the front and strike, but we, we cross behind. Uh, that might be a little bit different, but the thing is, we're here. One, two, three, four. So you can see how you, you work directions with this. So we have you know, the forward direction, and we have some corner movements that we work with. But it all, you know, here's a corner movement going up high. Then we have the position like this is your high block. Here's your strike again. Here's your step. Here's your step and your strike. So actually, I worked with someone today on that. So that's actually uh, one of the movements. You push out. It's not level. It's slightly angled like this. You're in a horse stance. Your arms are fully extended, but it's not just one-sided action. So, you know, that's the yin and yang of movement. Your stick, uh, if you go back to some of the archive video, you can work your sequence. I just did a couple of different moves, actually a few new moves from there. Because after we go here, here, and here, which is three, four, five, six, seven. So that's one set of movement. You go up, down, one, two is another set of movements. So, you know, if you revisit the video, you would see that, and then you can practice. Uh, you, have to, you have to look at it, follow it, and then, you know, if you're trying to learn from video, you actually have to really watch it a lot because the visuals capture the video and get that image into your brain. Without the, without the image in the brain, it's very hard to uh, recall. <coughs> So I'm going to go back to the broadsword a little. So <clears throat> anybody that does broadsword, there's, you know, Tai Chi is the same thing. You have a waist cut. These are waist cuts. Your sword has to go to the waist. Diagonal cut. Diagonal slice. The hand goes through the center. It goes over the top. And it chops. So that's called over the head stroke. Okay. When you stab, it goes straight. Okay. Like this, this is the hook, so your hands like this. <coughs> when you're like this, hands like this. When you're here, it's like this. So the sword position is like this. There's your suspended, there's your palm. So the, these are postures. You have, your, you have your forward positions. You have your hand like this. You have your hand like this, right? So when we have salute, we're like this. When we bring it back, it's like this. So that's the body form that we try to create. And when you learn, you have to create all of those. Just if you learned it here with the regular fist form, you should have this. Now you have something in your hand. You have to be adapt. Don't hold this too tight, but you have don't hold it too loose. Where you're going to drop it, and then. You know, how you control the sword is like this, and then flowers are these. When the hands go like this, you're creating a flower. You have two directions of flowers, 
and you have to fo track and follow the sword. If you have side view, it's over the top. So those are basic movements. So those are fundamentals. You practice those basic fundamentals to your wrist becomes accustomed to the motion. It's cutting up and it's coming over the top. You want to go to the other side, goes like that. You want to go over the top and go like that. That's how you develop. So those are uh, simple strokes, but actually, till you get control of the sword, you will see that you need still your body form. You know? And your know, minor captures that in you know, a lot of the weaponry sequence because it's a mapping. It takes you know even our form, even our, our weaponry forms are fairly long, and it goes through. But there, there is a practice. It's working two sides. In fact, Chief Edo actually works four quadrants. Uh, sometimes we only do two sides um, as a modified because, you know, four sides is for training. All you have to do is one side for performance because it's all the same. And, uh, you know, there's a bunch of things inside there that's very interesting. You know, there's some agility, there's jumping, there's all these. So I'll leave that to the young guys. So anyways, um, anyways, any questions you can have, uh, you can, we'll try to answer that. Okay, so, um, you know, if you practice hunga and you practice our weapons, they kind of have a correlation of the movements. So if I go like this, that's like diagonal strike, right? So that's why that's a, that's a body form, right? If I go like this, that's like loga, right? That's a body form. So that's where, what I mean by, you know, you have to have some foundation to do your do apparatus. Because if your footwork isn't right, your stances are not right, you know, you're going to try to build coordination with, with not a good foundation, and you're going to have to relearn everything. So it's, it's twice as hard. Most of the people here, um, they don't get to uh, learning a stick or staff until they get to at least um, gungji kun. You know, gungji kun is like, like the foundation form for that. But between, before you get there, we learn first form by far kun, second form lauga, lauga kun, and then we have the, the praying mantis form, and we have the fourth form, jen zheng, right? So those form build the foundation for coordination, and then once you start your stick form, then you're going to move from there to jifido. Uh, so we do, we do it in that order. Some people do it slightly different, like in Hong Kong, they do the monkey stick first, the double-headed staff form, they learn that form first. Uh, but my teacher always taught loga, uh, loga, lao sui stick form first. Um, that, so I just follow, you know, that protocol, and that's the order that we've been doing it. And then when you get to, um, you know, more advanced skill, though, then it's some some of it's subjective as whether they're going to learn. Um, well, butterfly form, double sword follows uh, that. But even if you can't do a single sword form, yeah, very hard to do double swords butterfly. And then that's short weapon, and then we end up going into um, either uh, double sword, monkey stick, or spear. So those, then we end up later on doing the long pole, eight diagram pole, and then we um, have some other things. There's uh, the guando, and then there's the pitchfork. So those are our primary weapons. And the butterfly sword form, we have two versions of it. One's called butterfly, the other one's called... Uh, the Big Moon Sword, which is similar to that. Actually, the Big Moon Sword from Tai Yu Do is called. It's really handed down from Lom Sai Wing, who is, um, you know, Wang Fei Hong's disciple. He's the sort of, if you've seen books, it's the person they call the, in the movies, he, he's called the butcher. And in the movies, he's also, he's also a bald guy, you know. So all the books on Lom Sai Wing have this person. That's who that is. And... Uh, our great grandmaster Lom Jo is a student of, of him as a nephew. So, anyways, uh, how are we doing there? Um, are we, how about time wise? 11 minutes. Okay. So, um, anyone have any questions at this point? Yeah. Use arms or use, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so going, going off of that, he says we can use forms to improve our arms work. So I, I said arms. Well, arms, he means um, sort of artillery arms, like mil weapons. So everything that you would do as an extension of the body becomes a weapon, an apparatus, right? A stick, a sword, you know, a, a knife, a baton. All of those are extensions of the body. So everything comes from here, right? So if I take a, a baton was just like a sword, and you strike and you strike, it really, the, the strength of that is really extension of your body. So in other words, using a hammer. They call this a hammer fist. Well, if I hold the hammer and I go wham like that, my goal is to put the head on the nail accurately without missing, otherwise you damage whatever you're trying to hit or to trying to build, so your accuracy is that. That's your stroke. So what's the most important part of that hammer fist is, is this. So when we're doing this, that's developing your hammer fist. When we're doing this, that's your chop and a slice of a sword or the cutting action of the sword. You have to remember the apparatus you're holding has a functionality. So a, a saber, a sword, is for cutting and slicing like you have in the kitchen. You have a cleaver, then you have a, a paring knife, and then you have uh, one that you use for carving or slicing. They're all different shapes, they're different lengths, they're different, they have different purposes. Um, we don't, in the kitchen, we don't do a whole lot of stabbing in this direction unless you, um, you know, plan to, you know, kill the cow. We actually do most of the stuff in slicing. And then if we do any poking, it's downward like this, like if you're trying to, like, uh, marinate or kind of soften a piece of meat with a mallet or whatever you're trying to do, the tenderizing. So when we stab... Your, your goal is like throwing a punch, right? So we stab like that. When you chop, you're like that, right? When you slice, you're like that. So just to give you an example of what two movements that we have in Gung Ji Kun, right? One of them is this, right? Lao. Lao. So if your body form is good, then your weapon will be better. So that's what I'm talking about. A lot of people don't understand that because they don't understand body form. They don't understand the mechanics. When I go like this, or like this, it's an uppercut, right? So you see, if I go like this, that's like this. Our body only can move in certain directions. So this thing can only go in certain directions. It's part of that. I slice like this, I slice like this. That's, that's the geometry of position, how accurately your body can move is based on your muscle memory and what you've built into your body. So if you can understand that, you know, all those things that you do over a course of a lifetime or decades and decades, of it, it's going to be better and better. You know, you know you can, how can it be better than better? It can, it just keeps improving because of your timing your structure, your position, and the kind of strength you're using. The kind of strength you're using, I, I discussed that before about, you know, doing sit-ups and push-ups. and you know, There's a specific goal in doing those. Doing a lot of sit-ups, you want to make your abs look good. You want to do a lot of push-ups, a lot of bench presses, you want to build your pecs, right? All of those are for conditioning and looking a certain way. But it doesn't really improve your striking uh, technique because it doesn't involve timing. You're not standing on your legs. You're not standing in a. You're not using your stance. You're in a prone position or a vertical position. It doesn't. You're not mobile. In fact, you can't do a lot of those. You know, especially if you're doing something very heavy, you'd hurt yourself moving out of position, and you'd hurt your back or you'd do whatever. So, so it's really completely different as far as I. Now, here's the advantage: when you do an apparatus, you're building motion. You're doing timing. It doesn't take a lot of strength unless you're using a very heavy weapon. So, so, you know, I don't like to use heavy weapons. Back in the day, they used a lot of heavy weapons because they, not, they had to build strength and flexibility and timing because back in the day in battle, you cannot get fatigued if you got, you know, you want to, when you make a chop, you want to destroy your opponent. You know, we're not doing that for today. 
So I prefer to use not a light, light weapon. That's a wushu weapon. My weapon doesn't actually. It's pretty, it's pretty stiff. It stands. It has a little bend there. But the thing is fairly rigid, and it's not really light, but it's balanced. I like movements that are uh, weaponry that are balanced because when it's balanced, I can maneuver it better without actually losing control of it. So if I'm here, I can emphasize my slice where I want it to. So you can see that it's that component of learning that is really beneficial. Um, that's that. You know, there, there's so many, um, you know, and, and weapons develop actually different kinds of energy. Like this is a spear. When I do this, you, you have action that's like this. It's, it's twirling. So, you know, when you do this, when I go like this, there's a different kind of power that you wouldn't be able to do if you were stiff. When I go, when I go like this, so you can see that the strength is in the action. When I thrust, it's there. Or I come up and it thrust, there's an action. That's an extension of timing of the body, you see. So this is on this side. If I was doing a stick, it's this side. But when I go like this, it's really the, the spear using a different, there's a, two different sides of the body that has to be trained. So it's still extension of the body. But what I want you to understand is all of this stuff is from the ground up. When you move, you move, you move, that's your footwork. No way can you do these weapons without the legwork because all it's going to be upper, upper body strength and it doesn't happen. So that's why weaponry, in a sense, is, a little, is more advanced. But to be skillful at it, it's you know, much more advanced because the, the energy and the movement, the kind of power you have is very dimensional. So uh, a lot of, lot of twisting and spiraling. Okay, um, anything else? Okay, How, how's the time? Three minutes. So, as, as all of you know, we're, uh, especially uh, Rose and Woody, um, we're going to be opening up uh, next Tuesday. So come to class, see how it is, see if you're comfortable. Uh, we're going to take your temperature. We have a little, uh, actually we're going to probably, uh, it's sent out as email, but we're, we're going to go through the guidelines of what everybody needs. You have to wear a mask, and we'll see if how many people come. Um, might, some people might be uncomfortable going through some of their forms with the mask on. We did it the other day with the mask on, um, and it was okay. Most people didn't complain about it, and uh, you know, we'll see where it goes. Um, the thing is, the water cooler is down. We can't use the water cooler because of one of the guidelines, so we're not using our water cooler, so you're, you can bring like a disposable bottle of water, and then after you drink it, you know, throw the plastic bottle away. There's going to be more plastic in the ocean than ever because of this. But the thing is, um, it's either one or the other. You either kill the atmosphere or destroy ourselves. So one of those has to give way. So we try to balance that out. Um, I'd l I'll let you use your own bottles here, but most people bring their bottles and they forget them. And I still have a couple from three months ago that I d didn't throw up because they're pretty nice bottles. Uh, but if it's a junky bottle, it gets junked gets trashed. So um, if you feel like you can manage your own bottle as a, as a you know, reusable one, then by all means bring it, but make sure you keep track of it. Because once you leave, I, we have no idea who, whose they are. And we, we don't want to be cleaning these kind of storage bottles. But the best is disposable. And if you get the little ones, they're the best. Um, you know, maybe we'll pick up some, but the little ones, you, don't, you can drink it all and throw it away. It's easy. If you drink a whole one, bring a whole one like that, and you take two sips, then we're left with another bottle here. So anyways, so hopefully you can understand. Remember, weapons are extension of the body, so the more you practice your forms, the better. In fact, even if you don't get into weaponry, if you just practice your forms, that in itself is actually a, a pretty uh, deep cultivation. Uh, I don't, you know... You know, if you're at home and you don't have a lot of room to practice weapons, then you can only you can actually practice your weapons virtually. You you go through the motions. Not as easy to do until you actually know it. So if I did, 
if I did the stick form and I went like this and I went like this, you know, I could do the form because my, my body actually knows the movements. So when I do this, I have accuracy of motion, but the timing really is like what I would be doing if I had that stick. That's already been programmed into my body. And any of our senior people, students, we have a lot of, quite a few sifus in the academy. A lot of the people have been here um, for 25 years or more. Some of the people here have been here training in this system for 35 years. So we just have a lot of old, long-term students here. So, you know, you know, I'm not the only show here. There's other people here that can do this. Uh, just that, you know, I talk a lot more than they do. Uh, anyways, so on that note, I think have a good weekend. If you're doing Tai Chi, I'll see you tomorrow. If you're not doing Tai Chi, just doing Kung Fu. And a uh, student here locally, I'll see you Tuesday. And if you're here for Tai Chi, we'll be here live Tuesday morning. And that's it. Give us a thumbs up. See you next time. Hope that was uh, instructional or informative anyways. And um, see you next time.